Today I'm going to show you what can be done with events that are handled in the middle of your form, thus presenting a very simple form to the user, but at the same time doing a lot of complex work underneath the hood. So what I'd like to show you is this stock entry with a photo. This is from our book database that we created in order to run our bookstore. And so when I open this up, it preloads with a little bit of data and I'll show you the event that kicks off when you open the, the form a, a bit later. In fact, I'll show you all of the events that drive this form. But what I want to do is show you how easy and seamless it is for the user to work with this particular form. So we've got a happy path situation here. I'm going to choose a book here, one of my favorite authors. It says Richard Bachman, but we know that that's Stephen King in his, in his later years. But if I scan this particular barcode, which you see, it's an ISBN barcode, so it, it likes it. It starts with 978, it goes 13 characters, it's good. And we already have seen this book in our, in our bookstore, although this particular book, um, is a new member of the inventory. So what has to happen then is, is the user will, will then scan the location that will eventually go on a shelf. Now, the location is just a bin. And we even have a, a little bit of an error trap there that if I scan something that's not a bin location, but a shelf location accidentally, we, uh, we get another message uh, some poor deer forgot to scan the location. Uh-oh. So we can, we'll get this message if we forget to scan it. We'll get this message if we scan the wrong thing. So let's try again. It notice it blanks it out. All of these are events being captured. And now I can scan the appropriate one. And notice the form totally blanks. And the happy path has been accomplished. And we have the book stowed in a bin. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to accidentally scan a book but not scan the ISBN. So I have a book here and on the back, you see a lot of times two different barcodes and it's very easy to accidentally scan the wrong barcode. And what we had to do is work into the database a way to tell that, uh oh, it's not the right barcode here. So what this says is, oh, yo, that's not an ISBN. You miss something important, try it again, okay? So that's the programmer in me being a little bit cute underneath the hood there, instead of just saying, hey, dummy, um, you messed up. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to this book that I scanned the wrong barcode on. Remember, I had two barcodes, but if I scan the right barcode, it turns out that this particular book doesn't have a picture. So what happens here is it shows up with Access Imagine, which is our picture capture software, showing that there is no image in the database. Now, what's interesting about this is that is another video that we have in the library that you can go look and see how we actually implemented taking a picture inside of a database. Okay, so now what happens if we find a book that comes into the bookstore, but isn't in our database yet? Well. I found a book that likely isn't in the database. It's the World Wide Web from 1985, 1995, and even on three and a half inch disc. So it's probably not in the database because we probably threw away every other one we found, but I kind of kept this as a keepsake. Anyway, that joke just doesn't get any better, does it? <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead and scan this one and see what happens. And it looks like it's working out. Our puppy dogs are there. So you see that it did come back with a record. It matches the record we put in. So we get to choose at this point. It said, go ahead and insert this record. I click insert there. It needs a picture. So we wanna go ahead and take a picture and We'll go ahead and click there to take the picture. Wait a couple of moments. We got the picture. And now all I have to do is scan the bin location that we're going to put it in. And it can go off onto the shelf. So what happens now if we scan a book into the database that's not in our database and Google hasn't heard of it either. Now, this is a really, really rare case. And we really had to search the archives to find 
a book that was just right for this demo. But let's see what happens. This one should also go through, see the puppies. We're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting, and there's no return below. So this is the ultimate error message, meaning ah, we can't find this book at all. Even though it has an ISBN 13, occasionally Google doesn't even know about it. So this book ends up getting set aside and we have to do some manual entry here. And we choose the button, not this one, Captain. And we go on to the next book. Now that we've shown you what it looks like from a user view, what I'd like to do is show you all the work that gets done behind the scenes. Because this form really is our workforce, workhorse form. And it really does 90% of all the work that we uh, do in getting the book ready to go into stock and putting it in, in stock. So I'm going to put this in design view. And uh, let's take a look at a few of the things that are going on. The first thing that happens is that when the form loads, it launches our first event procedure. On load, if we look at this event procedure, what we find, and let me pull it up here on the screen, is that it, it is executing this quick one here that basically starts by unloading the data out of a temp table and reloading it. Now, this table is critical for a lot of the operations later in that drop-down list that I'll show you here in a minute. It's the one where we put the ISBN code in and then you saw really is the first thing we do is put in an ISBN number. Either we scan it or we type it in either way. That's where the uh, that's where all the action starts. So let, let me go ahead and minimize this so you can see that it's loading the table underneath this ISBN code. So what happens next? The first thing that we do when we're a user is enter the ISBN. And notice that there are three event procedures just in the ISBN. Now, note that there's a before update, an after update, and a got focus. Now, got focus it starts when you very first start the, start the form. So the focus is going to be in that field right from the very beginning. So what does it do when it hits the focus? Well, let's see. The first thing it does then is it comes here and it says, we're going to then fill in some information. So from our previous form, we were able to put in the uh, series that we were working with and um, the username. Actually, the previous form had the username. At the top of the form, we can have the series header. So let's go take a look at that. At the top of the form up here, we can put in a series if we're going to do a bunch in the same series. And it'll, it'll autofill this field right down here. So this event procedure pulls the data into this series and into this field right here from the previous form. Okay, so that's the first thing it does. Now, it might sound a little bit odd what a before update is. Well, how can it update before it updates? Well, what's really happening here is when a database is working and you put data in a field, at some point the database then commits the data to the backend database, to the table that the form is residing over. So before update is going to check that data. And let's go take a look at the what it does. It's going to check to see if that ISBN is really an ISBN. Well, we, we don't want just any old barcode put in there. In fact, sometimes there's two different barcodes. And we demonstrated the fact that sometimes there's two different barcodes on the back. One is an actual ISBN and one is just a barcode for a stock number. And so if you put the stock number in by mistake, this message right here is going to kick off and let you know that that's not an ISBN. Let's try again. So that is our before update because we don't want the data getting into the database if it's not really an ISBN. So the next thing is after it's updated. Now the, the check that's gone on at this point is we know that it's an ISBN or at least it's 10 or 13 characters. It's, you know, good to go at least for an ISBN. So after update. Now, the first thing it's going to do here in the after update 
Notice the code here is quite a bit longer, but I'll abbreviate what's really going on here. What happens here is it first of all checks to see if the barcode appears in the drop-down list. Remember that table that we loaded beforehand? It was the data that populated that combo box. If it finds it in that combo box, it says, great, we're done, and it bails out of this whole routine. The second check is if it's not found in there, it moves on. Now we'll talk about it moving on and all the things that happen when it moves on here in, in a, a few minutes, but we're following this happy path. So let's say it found the ISBN. So the very first thing it's gonna do is if it find, finds the, looking for ISBN, if it finds that it's greater than quote, quote, in other words, it finds it in the table then it's going to immediately say, okay, we're good and we're going to move back to the form. So let's close this. So now we've found an ISBN. What happens after that is really just a, the mechanics of the form being attached to a data table in the back. When it finds that ISBN, it brings up the data. It, it filters to just that ISBN's worth of data, shows it and presents it on the form and the next thing is, does it have a picture or not? In other words, the, this field is filled in and this field drives this applet that we've put in here to take the picture to say, is there a picture already in the database? Because that's pointed to a folder and the JPEG name is in here and it refers to that. And if it finds it in that folder, it'll display the picture. If it doesn't display the picture, we just take the picture with the, uh, the camera icon here. After that's done, the cursor is here in location. Now, if it finds it or doesn't, the cursor ends up in the location field. If it doesn't find it, the user knows to click the camera button, put the book underneath the camera, take the picture. And then after that, after that is executed, in fact, when I click on here, there's the event procedure for it. And it is just a really short event that calls the photo routine. And when it does that, it then moves the cursor over to the location field when it's done taking the picture. And so in the location field, couple event procedures there. Before update, it's going to look to see if it's an actual location barcode. In other words, we have in the bookstore a particular format for our locations. And so we don't want just any information there. And the particular location code, you know, looks like this. It's U11 in this case. So it's a letter followed by two digits. So that letter and two digits allows the database then to locate the bin that the particular book is in. So under this event procedure, we have just formatting characters that says it needs to look like three characters with an alpha character and two numeric characters. And if it passes that check on the before update, it goes ahead and puts the data in there. And of course, here's our got focus thing too, that says when it gets the focus here, it's gonna refresh the page here and make sure that all the data is there, okay? So here we've run through several different event procedures that can be embedded just in under this events tab to drive the form and do the things that need to be done. Now, the next thing we wanna do is go look at what happens if the ISBN is not found in our database. In other words, this is a new book for the bookstore. And what ends up happening is we go back to this ISBN field, which is the first to start. And if we go back to this after update procedure, um, before we stopped right here, the happy path ends the subroutine right here because we found the book. So we'll go ahead and go down here to else and go looking for the book. This is where we query Google. We go out to the Google API and we look for the data. It returns us back an XML file. And then the first thing that happens is we check that XML file to see if the one request that we sent to them to return one book is the right book. If it's the right book, we start populating the form and we give 
control back to the user and it ends up back here in the location field because it'll populate all of the other data there. Because it's new, of course, it'll go through the same routine of, okay, the user needs to give it another picture. And so it clicks on the camera and we grab a picture, we put in the location and away we go. Now, what you're seeing down here though, is you're seeing this table down here. Because what happens when it comes back is if it doesn't feel comfortable that it has a match, it'll show it down here. Here we have a situation where we have users making a choice here. The, they will manually inspect the entry that came back. Now there's two situations that can happen here. The book can be right, but the ISBN is different. So it found the book, but it didn't find the exact ISBN we were looking for. So what we do then is we go ahead and we can accept this one and we can say, insert this record, sir. And we can click that button, move on our way. We can also look at it and say, that's not the right book. And if we can do that, uh, if we look at the entry and it's just not the right book, we say, not this one, sir. And we can click on that button. So. Here we have the insert this record. We have an event procedure. Of course, it's an on-click event procedure. That's one of the more common event procedures. You got buttons that execute things. The other ones that I've shown you are a little bit more unique and sometimes a lot more useful than before update, after update, got focus and various things like that. So we click this event procedure and we see that we're into this section here where we're going to then take all the data and we're gonna shove it into the table where it belongs and we go on our merry way. We take the picture and we go. The next one is not this one. And that event procedure then is this one that basically says, we're going to get, we're going to set the focus. We're going to set the visibility to that, that form down below to invisible, make sure that it disappears for the user so that they don't want to click on it. And uh, we, we move on. We then repaint the form to make sure the form appears all refreshed and ready to go. So that's our tour through event procedures. We have a lot of them here in this form simply because that can do the work and keeps it and hides it from the user. We don't want to make the user physically input data in multiple places at multiple times and duplicate that work. So this form does a lot of that background work. Now, the real trick here is to make your forms simple enough that pretty much anybody can be trained to use it and use it effectively without errors. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and uh, please subscribe to the channel if you find this useful. Thanks.